welcome to The World Transformed. This week, we're talking about transformation today. We're talking about stories in the current headlines that indicate accelerating change is accelerating. It's happening now, and it's happening faster. Our world is going to be very different based just on reading today's headlines. My name is Phil Bowermaster, and with me in the virtual studio is my co-host, Stephen Gordon. How are you, Stephen? Hey, Phil. I'm doing great. How about yourself? Super fantastic. Stephen, i got a question for you. How old are you, really? Well, you know, it, it, you could say 48, or you could say, you know, uh, 38. Depends on uh, how chronologically old you think I am and how mature I am, right? There's, there's a difference. The, there is a big difference. We all want to think that we're young at heart, but how right. old are we actually? This story we've got, AI scientists via their aging clock may have discovered how to rewind our biological clocks. You know, on Monday we talked a little bit about how artificial intelligence is taking employment away. So it's only fair that we take a few minutes today and let's talk about how artificial intelligence can maybe give us something back. And what it might give us back is a few years to our lives. Here we've got some researchers that are doing some important work. They're using AI to figure out what a person's biological age is versus their chronological age. An interesting story here. Let me read just a, just a smatter. The primary researcher involved says that while most of us tend to think of age as the number of birthdays we've celebrated, scientists agree this metric, also known as our chronological age, is not the most accurate predictor of our mortality or how long we can expect to live. What's more, the figure could be off by as much as 30 years. A far more accurate predictor is our biological age, which measures how quickly the cells in our body will deteriorate compared with the general population. Depending on the genetics we inherit and the lifestyle choices we make regarding diet, exercise, weight, stress, and habits like smoking or drinking, our biological age can vary as much as 30 years compared with our chronological age. So what you've got here is a program that lets you get a better idea of the eternal question to doctors, how long have I got, doc, right? Right. Um, For someone, not just someone who's sick, but for someone who's perfectly healthy. If you're, say, 48, or in my case, 55 years old, you, you want to figure out how long you have to live. How do you, how do you make that determination? Well, the life insurance companies publish these very helpful actuarial tables, which tell you, on average, how long a person in your cohort might expect to live. And, of course, these things vary greatly, depending on what country you live in, depending on what part of the country you live in, depending on what you do for a living, depending on whether you're a smoker, There's there's a lot of factors that go in even to the actuarial tables, but this takes it one step further, and it doesn't look at you versus a whole statistical population. It looks at very intricate details about what's going on inside your body, and from there makes a determination about how much longer you can expect to live, and as a result, gives some suggestions on what you might change in order to live longer. Now, we know that tools like this already exist online, but this is taking it one step further by having the artificial intelligence make some some real serious predictions about what's going to happen to you next. What do you think about a tool like this, Stephen? Is this something you would use? Oh, yeah, I think so. There are people that would uh, find this too intrusive, and and, and maybe they, they don't want to hear the bad news. You know, sometimes you don't want to. But if you're if you're willing to face some potentially bad news to improve your outlook, you know, because maybe you can change a few things, add a few years to your life, maybe add some, add some quality to your life, right? Then, then hey, it's, it's worth doing. And so, yeah, would I do it? Absolutely, I would do it. And, I, you know, I would just say, Phil, just in my own observations, we've, we've seen people in our lives, Phil, that uh, by age 50 they look ancient, right? Right, or, yep. And you've seen the opposite, too, you know, someone hale and hearty at age 80. And so, yeah, this 30 years business, uh, how it can be off, yeah, I, be- I believe that. I really do. A lot of it depends on how you take care of yourself, but I, I think sometimes it's just luck involved in this too, right? Well, you know? luck as measured by genetics in, in some cases, right. for sure. Yeah, the, the luck the, of the draw on your, your, your genetic lottery in some way. And you occasionally see this. Some actress does a bikini shot that's probably airbrushed to some extent at age 55 or something, and they look incredible, right? Right. To some extent, that's good genetics, and... Some of it's good editing, right? But you you just see a a huge variation in the population 
between uh, some people and others. And it's, some of it's just good luck, but a lot of it is just taking care of yourself. Yeah, a couple weeks ago, after the Oscars, our friend PJ Manny observed that the Oscars are an advertisement for life extension. Because if you look at the Oscars, you see a bunch of people who are much older than they appear to be, right? They, they all look healthy. Yeah. They, they all look fantastic. And, and some of them running into their 60s, 70s, some of them into their, into their 80s. But they all have this very youthful, healthy appearance. Now, a lot of that's cosmetic. On the other hand, Hollywood people do live a long time. You know? So there's probably something to be said for the rather strenuous diet and exercise routines a lot of these folks put themselves through. And it could be that the genetics that make you good looking to begin with might also statistically correspond with genetics that help you to live a long time. Talk about luck, right? Talk about unfair right there. It's like, yeah. oh, you're, you're, you're good looking and talented and you get to live a long time. So that, 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 hardly, that hardly seems fair. But the genetic lottery aspect is one part. The other part is what you can do about it what you can do about where you are right now. So if you enter your data into this system and it takes a look at you and says, well, you've got about 17 years to go. But if you make these changes, whether it be diet or exercise or supplements or whatever it would be, I don't know, getting something treated, you've got another 26 years, right? Or you've got another yeah. 36 years. That's a huge step in the right direction. That is really... Even without a magic pill for extending life, that is, a, that is a huge step towards people being able to extend their lives. I think that, right. that a, a system like this is probably more important towards a future in which we have indefinite lifespan than we give it credit. That more, much more advanced versions of this sort of thing, and in concert with treatments that we will have, is really going to be the thing that helps us to to live a very long time. It's likely that the magic bullet that just fixes everything isn't going to come along for a long time. It's likely that what we'll have is a few ways of dealing with long-term chronic conditions and a few ways of just generally making ourselves healthier and more resilient. And where the emphasis goes between those two things and specific interventions that need to occur, this this is going to be something that you're going to need to make that happen. So I, I think one of the big markers maybe in how long people live going forward will be whether they use something like this. You know, a friend of our show, uh, Ray Kurzweil, has written a couple of books with co-authored Dr. Terry Grossman. And I think really the point of their two books together is, yeah, we don't have the, the techniques right now to turn back the clock all that well. But if you can do these things you can kind of build a bridge to the point where we do have the ability to give you the genetics of some superstar, right? Live long enough now to get to the point where we can do the real work to make you younger. And I think that's a fantastic idea. That's an intriguing offer. Yeah. You, yeah. you know what? You don't want to die five years before they cure aging, right? You don't want to die of old age five <laughs> years before, before they cure, or yeah. worse, five weeks before they, they, they cure aging. So part of this is kind of, there's this slog of getting through life, of, of staying alive, that's, that's a hard thing to do. But there is a time coming when we're going to be a lot better at this than we are. And I feel that a solution like this is a great optimization in that direction. And also, I think in maybe a less direct way. It points to a very different kind of future that we'll be living in, and that's one where we get to choose our age, where ultimately we get to decide how, how old or how young we are. Now, this is a very crude implementation of that, because all we're doing is trying to stave off the inevitable here, right? It's like you're 45 years old, and it says, well, at the rate you're going now, you got 20 years. But if you make these changes, you got 30 years, right? So you, you give yourself those additional 30 years, and you've made yourself effectively younger. You've effectively made yourself younger because going forward, you've, you've given yourself more potential life. You've given yourself a longer, a longer lifespan. But there's a time coming when, like the folks in Hollywood, we'll have a lot to say about how old we look. And how old yeah. we look 
will be disattached, will be completely unrelated to how old chronologically we actually are. So how old a person looks and how old their body is in terms of what its expected lifespan will be and how old you feel, those three, which are completely tied up with each other now, will be completely unrelated. I think, Phil, that there's a fair chance that a lot of the uh, solutions for this come from places that we would not have expected, right? I mean, uh, right now we look to, to pharmaceutical companies and research doctors and things like that for this. I think there's a chance that Silicon Valley delivers a lot of these solutions. So, you know, you've got, you got Google working on projects like this right now. Absolutely. So, that's true. What's the name of the Google company that's addressing aging? It slips my mind right now, but there is a book by Cory Doctorow, a novel called Down and Out in the Magic Kingdom, and it describes a future that we've referenced many times on this show, where he has introduced this idea of the bitchin' society. It's an interesting future society where government works differently. Everything works differently. It's a post-scarcity society. It's also a po- post mortality society to the to the extent that people don't age anymore unless they want to age and one of the things that that characters in the book are described as having is an apparent age so it's not that anybody has a particular age but they have an apparent age so you might be whatever however old you actually are but an apparent age of 45 or you might have an apparent age of 19 and in this future world you can be 19 years old looking and actually be, whatever it is, 150 years old. So chronological age and apparent age are completely unattached from each other. They have nothing to do with each other. Now, this AI that we're talking about here and the course of treatment that it provides is far removed from that, but it's actually a step in that direction. It's actually kind of the first step towards a world where someday people are going to disassociate actual physical chronological age from apparent age, and that's going to be a very, very different world, isn't it? Absolutely. Hey, I wanted to uh, point out a quote from uh, William Gibson's Neuromancer. In uh, the first chapter, there's a bartender, and it, it, it was described of him, in an age of affordable beauty, there was something herald- heraldic, <laughs> about his lack. heraldic, yes, heraldic about his lack of it, and I, th- I always <laughs> thought that was a great quote. I mean, he, he he could afford to look great, but chose not to, and that set him apart, right? In in that world, um, that's right. It, the, we can look forward to a future where if you see somebody who's really old, okay, it'll be it'll be one of three reasons, okay, either they've got religious or other moral scruples against treating their aging, or they're putting on an act of some kind, right? It's like they've, out of protest or something like that, they've decided to go ahead and age themselves. Or they're hippies, right? They've just decided, I, I look better really old, right? That's and do, doesn't any of, those, any of those possibilities make them a little bit interesting to, the, to a world of 25-year-old looking people? Uh, they, they kind of set themselves apart. The name of the Google subsidiary is Coleco. They're the ones working on uh, anti-aging. Oh, there you go. So. All right. Couldn't think of it. And now we've got that. So it's coming. It's coming. You want to be there. If you want to, as I like to say, live to see it, here's what you want to do is you want to start looking for markers now. You want to start thinking about how old you are now, not just in terms of how many years have gone by, but more importantly, in how many years you've got left. And that doesn't have to be morbid, especially if you're working on it in such a way that you're trying to increase those and expand those. And especially if you're trying to increase and expand those because you're looking forward to the future, because you're working on things that you like to do, and because you want more time to have an interesting life. I think you combine all of that, and you've got a recipe for truly healthy life extension, a life extension that isn't just about making people live longer, but that is about making life more worthwhile, both for the people whose lives are extended and for everyone else around them on friday phil we're gonna we're gonna talk about better living through modified brain waves so that when we live long we're still ourselves right we're not uh, uh diminished by alzheimer's and other diseases so uh, we we'll want to definitely join back in for that let's talk next time about improving quality of life great talking with you Stephen. great having you all with us and until next time live to see it mm-hmm.